The relationship between humans and apes has always been ambiguous. Throughout history, apes have often been considered as the forerunners or caricatures of humans. Too animal to be human and too human to be animal. So much so that before humans exposed themselves to the dangers of space travel, they sent their draft copies into space. And it is certain that the first primates to have traveled in space are not who we generally believe them to be. But what distinguishes us from apes? It is a long-held belief that humans are the only animals who laugh, use tools, are capable of one-to-one -one love, engage in politics, or who walk on two legs. This diagram shows that man descends from apes. Throughout evolution, the ape straightens up to become mankind. The bipedal human, perfectly upright on two feet, could be the end point of evolution. Michel Halle Guyan and his dance company have joined forces with the paleoanthropologist Pascal Pic to demonstrate the opposite. They have choreographed the history of bipedism to show us that walking on two legs is not a uniquely human ability. Three dancers went to meet Clara, a very special choreographer. Among the great apes, it is the bonobo that spends the most time on its two feet. Humans today are perfectly upright primates, but the conquest of the upright stature has not been without difficulty. So did humans descend from the apes? I can reassure everyone, not at all. Humans did not descend from apes, they still belong to the great apes. There's nothing pejorative in this, as long as you know about apes. And we know that there are apes that are much closer to humans than they are to other apes. For example, we share 99.4% of our genes with chimpanzees, which are our brothers. We belong to a group of primates known as the great apes. This is what the science of genetics has contributed. It has shown us that in fact bonobos and chimpanzees resemble us humans much more closely than they resemble gorillas. From here we can go on to say that chimpanzees, bonobos and humans have a final common ancestor dating back six or seven million years in Africa. While humans have opted for the upright stature in the course of evolution, the great apes have remained essentially quadrupedal. Okay, here we have several things, the primate, the great ape and the quadruped mammal. The standard, classic primates are four-legged and plantigrade. They put the palms of their hands on the ground, and in particular the thumb and the big toe are splayed. This enables them to grasp branches when they move through the trees. And they have a particular posture, the pelvis is higher than the shoulders because the lower limbs are longer. From this point we try to raise the head, which is not easy for us, and it's rather a fluid gait. The thing is to move towards each other like that. I'm a big heavy ape, but for you it should be easier. Walking on four legs to move around through the trees enables excellent balance and great stability. But there is a more acrobatic solution, which revolutionizes our view of the world. Suspension. Suspension, that's like walking on your hands. You forget your pelvis. It's a bit like freestyle swimming. You grab a branch, and the pelvis is behind. Although today we no longer swing through the trees, our anatomy has retained traces of this method of locomotion. A perfect reconstruction of the human body obtained by CAT scan shows the special shape and orientation of our shoulder. This joint enables us to move our arms easily, vertically, as well as laterally. Suspension brings about a totally different spatial relationship. And quite rightly, we think that this large body suspended in a three-dimensional space is one of the origins of self-awareness and of awareness in relation to the world. Precise laboratory studies show that the muscles of the upper thigh, hips and lower back 
function in the same way when a great ape climbs a tree as when it walks upright. In fact, suspension and climbing up a tree trunk are predisposing factors for bipedism. In this work with Michel Hallett Egayen's company and his dancers, it was a great surprise to observe that the dancers, who are used to working with their bodies, with learning and memory, were capable of reproducing the gestures and the methods of locomotion of the apes. They went up the trees as quadrupeds, they came down again standing upright on their feet. Having your hands full obliges you to straighten up. When she walks, you see, it's bent. Look, it's superb, a lovely stride. You see, that's it. Voilà. In humans as well as in chimpanzees, intelligence developed via the hand. In the two primates, the opposable thumb is an essential asset for manipulating the world. However, the chimpanzee's fingers are longer than ours. This makes their hands more powerful, but the fingers can get in the way for manipulations requiring precision. The upright stature enabled the human hand to concentrate exclusively on manipulation and expression. It has developed extraordinary dexterity. In comparison, the ape's manual abilities are far more limited. This is because their hands play an essential role in their mobility. Hands like those of the gibbon are necessary to become a master at swinging from branch to branch. Professor Fukuda and his research team were inspired by this when they set themselves a challenge to design a robot capable of moving independently from branch to branch. They called their project the Brachiator Project. To obtain an optimal method of displacement, the Brachiator will have to reproduce the physiology of the gibbon. How can a robot with such agility be produced? The difficult task for the team is to endow the robot with a system for transcribing the topography with precision. Two cameras have been placed on each side to reproduce the ape's vision. Human vision has been inherited directly from the apes. Each eye sends a distinct image to the brain as the Brachiator's camera does to the computer. The brain, or the computer, then superimposes the images, thereby creating a three-dimensional stereotypic view that is ideal for moving through the trees. Well, almost. As the eyeballs moved closer, the nasal cavities grew smaller. In apes, therefore, vision has supplanted the sense of smell. Very fine color vision is also necessary for finding fruits in the trees. This is an ability that humans have put to use with great success. The construction of the Brachiator shows how closely our methods of perception are linked to our lineage, that of the great apes. Are humans capable of artificially reproducing the method of locomotion they used millions of years ago? It's a total success. The combination of a skillful hand with fine and precise vision makes considerable cerebral development possible.
Using scanning techniques, it is possible to compare the brains of chimpanzees and humans. Despite the difference in volume, there are two quite separate hemispheres. In addition, the prefrontal cortex is less developed in the chimpanzee. At the University of Kyoto, the Japanese primatologist Tetsuo Matsusawa evaluates the intellectual prowess of chimpanzees. At the university, several families of chimpanzees thrive in a pleasant site in which their natural environment is reproduced. Um, there is a group of 15 chimpanzees. Um, the group consists of three generations and it's comparable to the natural group of chimpanzees in Africa. Hi. For 30 or more years, Professor Matsusawa has enjoyed a privileged relationship with Ai, an adult female chimpanzee, and more recently with her son, Ayumo, too. One, two, three, four, five, that was good. Are we the only creatures capable of assessing and classifying quantities? In this test, Ai and Ayumo must memorize and arrange the numbers in order. For the moment, young Ayumo manages to get up to the number four, whereas his mother can go up to nine. But does this really have anything to do with numbers? So I think is this uh, last session of one, two, four. Um, I think uh, many people may misunderstand that Ayumo know the concept of number, count like one, two, three, four. Mm. But actually, he has no knowledge about the meaning of the numerals. In contrast to it, I, she knows all the meaning of the numerals from zero through nine. For example, uh, when I presented fibre pencils, uh, he can correctly touch the numeral five. Three cups, she can touch three. So in that sense, she knows the meaning of the numerals. Evaluating quantities is natural for primates. At a glance, they know how to choose the tree that will provide the most fruit. Here is an even more complicated test. As soon as the figures appear on the screen, they are masked and Ai and Ayumo must call on their memories to classify them. An adult human is capable of memorizing up to seven numbers at a time. I manages to memorize five. This corresponds to the performance of a five-year-old child. If children of that age love scribbling, young chimpanzees are no exception. But contrary to generally accepted thought, scribbling is a particularly complex operation. A great amount of coordination is required to scribble something on a sheet of paper. <laughs> 